On this edition of Food for Life, Father Mark Goring looks at Hold Nothing Back. Or some people who are very intelligent have the means to make great wealth think, okay, I give up being rich, you know, to the Lord, I surrender to the Lord. Well, the Lord might want you to be a very successful and wealthy business person because He has a plan for you. But you need to begin by surrendering everything uh, to the Lord. And there's this line that I know I heard when I was a kid, and I've never forgotten it. She says, there is only a, because Elijah says, bring me some water and make me, make me a cake of bread. And she, her answer is, there is only a handful of flour in my jar and a little oil in my jug. Just now I was collecting a couple of sticks to go in and prepare something for myself and my son. When we have eaten it, we shall die. She was about to prepare her last little meal for her and her son. They were going to eat it, and then they were going to die. And then Elijah speaks the word of the Lord to her, tells her she doesn't have to worry. And Elijah says, so go first and make me some bread, and then you and your son eat. And again, just hearing that story for the first time when I was a child years ago, just shocked at this woman's woman's faith, that she wasn't offended or, or, or disgusted with someone suggesting that. Make me some food first with what you're, you have left. Uh, but it's, it's a powerful, beautiful story. And there are a number of biblical themes in this story that are repeated throughout Scripture. And so I'd just like to look at, at four of these biblical themes that, um, again, are just repeated over and over and over again in Scripture. And in this one little story, we have a summary of them. The first theme is the call to not be afraid. When the widow tells Elijah, listen, I'm going to make our last meal, and then we're going to die, Elijah's response in verse 13 of 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 13, is he says to her, be not afraid. Now, you need to have a lot of faith in God. You need to know God real well to be in a situation like that of drought, where people are starving and dying, where there's no rain, to be able to say to, to this woman, be not afraid. And yet this is a, a, a repeated exhortation that the Lord says to us. No matter how bad things are, be not afraid. Even if it seems like your boat is sinking, the water's coming in, the winds are strong, and the waves are high, be not afraid. And we're told that in, in the Bible, there are 365 different mentions of the call to not be afraid. One for each day of the year, we're told. Now, I haven't double-checked to make sure that's actually true, but that's what they say, you know. And again, our, the, as, as children of God, it should make sense to us that we should not be afraid. I mean, what did Jesus tell us? Jesus said, I am with you always. You know, Paul says, if, if God is for us, who can be against us? Jesus says, don't worry about your life. Look at, look at the birds of the air. Your Father in heaven, He takes care of them. How much more will He take care of you? He says, the, the very hairs of your head are numbered. And so again, that call, be not afraid. How much faith do you have in God? How much do you know God? Are you able to, to say, to, 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 to believe that God will take care of everything? It's kind of like the story of the, uh, the, the little boy who had a teddy bear. And he took his teddy bear everywhere with him. He loved his teddy bear. He always had his teddy bear with him. But one night as he was getting ready to go to bed, he realized he forgot his teddy bear in the backyard, in the sandbox, and it was dark out. And he was, he was afraid of the dark. So he said, Mom, Mommy, can you, can you go get my teddy bear? It's in the backyard. I forgot it outside. And the mother said, no, I'm not getting your teddy bear. I told you not to, you know, leave your things laying around. You go get it yourself. And the boy said, oh, I, I'm not, I can't go out there. I'm afraid of the dark. And the mother said, you don't need to be afraid of the dark. The Lord is outside. He's there. 
So the little boy goes out to the, to the back door. He opens the door. He says, hey, Lord, can you pass me my teddy bear? <laughs> so the Lord calls us not to be afraid. He's, a, he's in the dark. Scripture says, even the darkest place, Lord, you are there. So that's the first theme. Be not afraid. The second theme we see in this story is what Elijah prophesies to this, this woman. And it's in verse 14. For the Lord God of Israel says, The jar of flour shall not go empty. The jug of oil will not run dry. And this, this word that the Lord gave to this widow through Elijah, that your jar of flour, it will not go empty. And your jug of oil, it will not run dry. I believe this is a word that God has for every one of his people. That God wants to assure us that he will provide. He will satisfy us in ways we can't even imagine. Again, the, the, the imagery here, the, the image of the oil, oil is an image of the Holy Spirit. And in John 3.34, it says, God gives the Spirit without measure, or He doesn't ration His gift of the Spirit. That means the Spirit of God in our lives is poured out to overflowing. And it will never run dry if we have faith and we believe in God. Now, is your life filled with the Spirit of God? Is your heart filled with God's Spirit? If you have faith in Him, it should be filled with the Holy Spirit. It should never run dry. It should constantly be overflowing. And so too the image of the flour or the bread. Bread or flour is an image of, of what we need to live on. And Jesus promises us that we will live. Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and have it in abundance. And so again, there should be uh, no, no fear about Lord, the Lord's provisions. You know, we think of the example of the, the Israelites when they were wandering, when they were journeying for 40 years through the desert. And they realized, hey, wait a minute, there's no food in the desert. We never thought about that. And what did the Lord do? He rained down this manna, this bread from heaven, the bread of angels, they call it. And he provided for them. They did not go hungry, even though they were in a desert. And again, the Lord wants to satisfy our hunger too, but not just our, our, our physical hunger. You know, when Jesus, when Jesus came and walked the face of the earth, He reminded us or He revealed to us that our life is a lot more than the number of years we're going to have in this world. There is something within us that is immortal, that is meant to live forever. And Jesus speaks about this manna in John chapter 6, verse 49 and 50. Jesus says, Your ancestors ate the manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat and not die. Jesus wants to provide for us in a way that truly satisfies who we are as human beings. We're, we're children of God, made, Im, created immortal. We're made for a lot more than, than this short life. We're made for eternal life. And God wants to assure us that He will provide the sustenance for us to live if only we would believe. We will continue with the teaching by Father Mark in just a moment. The Food for Life ministry is only made possible by the financial donations from you, our viewers. We ask that after the program, you prayerfully consider a tax-deductible financial donation to help us continue this Catholic television ministry. To save postage, you may now make your donation online. Just go to our website and follow the link. Thank you for your prayers and support. And now back to... Father Mark Goring. Another beautiful image of the Lord's provision, His surprising provision, His, his overabundant provision, is the beautiful story uh, of the wedding feast uh, of Cana. You know how the story goes, Jesus was invited to this wedding feast, and they ran out of wine. 
They say wedding feasts back then, they went on for a couple days, a whole week. And they ran out of wine, and they say that would have been a huge embarrassment for the hosting family and the hosting couple. And our lady intervenes, she intercedes, she informs Jesus that they're out of wine, and Jesus points forward to his, his future uh, hour, uh, and our lady just says, well, just do whatever he tells you. You know, I love the way Our Lady kind of sneaks in and takes care of things. But anyways, uh, we know that Jesus, he turned six big jars of water into wine. And, and we're told that he would have made 20 or 30 gallons of wine. And when they tasted this wine, the, the waiters uh, and the, or the, 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 the guests said, what's going on? You have saved the best wine to last. Usually the cheap wine is, is, is served once all the good wine is, runs out, but you've saved the best wine to last. And again, this is a, another image of the Lord's promise that He will provide. The third theme, the first theme is be not afraid. The second theme is the, the flour will not run out, the oil will not run out. The third theme is this widow, she believed the Word of God, which is amazing. Elijah, this man of God, comes. He prophesies to her. Elijah says, For the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Elijah speaks God's Word to her. He says, The flower's not going to run out. The oil's not going to run out. And this widow, not only does she believe, she believes in the fullest sense because it says she left and did as Elijah had said. That's true faith. That's the fullness of faith. Not just, yeah, I kind of believe in what the catechism says. No, true faith is doing. True faith is living your life based on God's Word. And this, this woman, amazing. Absolutely amazing. She's about to die. She only has a little flower left. And she sacrifices that because she believes God's Word. You know, another heroic, uh, awesome example of this is the Blessed Virgin Mary. You know, one day, someone, uh, a woman, we hear in Luke chapter 12, while Jesus was speaking, a, a woman from the crowd called out and said to him, Blessed is the womb that carried you and the breast that which you nursed. Jesus replied, Rather, blessed are those who hear the word of God and observe it. Now, some people take that as, as, oh, he's cutting down his mother, which is absolutely foolish. Jesus honored his mother. Jesus is highlighting, do you know what makes my mother great? It's not because she simply biologically conceived me. In Luke 1.45, Elizabeth, when she meets our lady who's pregnant with Jesus, in Luke 1.45, Elizabeth says, Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. If there's one woman who believed that Israel would be redeemed by the Messiah, it was the Blessed Virgin Mary. And that's why we call her blessed. She's blessed because she believed. And all generations, as Scripture says, will call her blessed because she believed. And not only was her belief just an intellectual belief, we, we see in John chapter 19, when Jesus is dying on the cross, and almost all of his disciples abandon him, except for John the beloved disciple, and almost all of his followers abandon him, and all of the crowd abandon him, Mary, Scripture tells us, was standing at the foot of the cross. And in John's gospel, to stand is a sign of believing, of being firm, of being resolute. Even though almost everyone ran away, she continued to stand and to believe. And that's why she is blessed among women. And so again, the Lord calls us to, to this faith. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 24, the Lord Jesus says, everyone who listens to these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. 
The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and buffeted the house, but it did not collapse. It had been set solidly on rock. And everyone who listens to these words of mine but does not act on them will be like a fool who built his house on sand. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and buffeted the house, and it collapsed and was completely ruined. Again, this, this widow who fed Elijah, her problem wasn't having her house blown away by rain. Her problem was there was no rain. But yet she believed the word of God and she lived. Her house remained, her son lived, and all of that, that type of thing. And so again, we can ask ourselves, how much am I basing my life on God's word? How much, how much am I actually living my life based on God's word? So that's the third theme. The first theme, be not afraid. The second theme, your cup will overflow. The third theme is we need to believe God's word. And now the fourth theme in this beautiful story is that this widow, she didn't hold anything back. I mean, she gave basically everything she had. Just like the widow who gave her two last coins her whole livelihood to the, to the temple treasury. You know, this widow, she didn't just kind of give a little bit of excess. She didn't kind of dip into, you know, some of her, you know, petty cash and say, okay, here's, here's a little something to help you out. She gave everything. And the truth is, is that as disciples of Jesus, every single one of us needs to take everything we have and are, everything, no exceptions, everything, and lay it down at the feet of Jesus and say, Jesus, you can have all of this. Take whatever you want, everything. My Corvette, my bass boat, my dirt bike. I, I don't own a Corvette bass, but I do own a dirt bike. But don't, <laughs> don't, don't get me wrong. The point is, is, whatever I have, my health, my children, my parents, my job, my dreams, my hopes, my future, everything. My sexuality, everything. I give you all that I have. My looks, my reputation, everything. It's all yours. You take all of it. Do with it whatever you will. Are you willing to do that? That's what the Lord asks from each one of us. Some of us, well, I want to hold this back and maybe I'll loan a bit of this to the Lord for some time. No. The Lord wants us to offer everything uh, to Him. Now, basic principle, just because we give everything to the Lord or we offer the Lord everything, it doesn't mean He's going to take everything. You know, you might say, okay, Lord, I'm willing to surrender, you know, my bass boat. Fine, it's yours. And the Lord might say, you know what? You can keep the bass boat. I think you should be fishing. It's good for you. It's a good way to spend time with your son. Praise God. Or you might say to the Lord, you know, there's a, there's a lot of, um, uh, not a lot, but oftentimes in the seminary or in religious convents, there are young men and women who come thinking that the only way that I can please God and be holy is if I become a priest or if I become a nun. And these people will spend a few months or maybe a year or two in the seminary and the convent, and it'll be obvious that, like, you're not in the right spot. And when you kind of talk to them, you realize the only reason you're here is because you think this is the only way to please God. And it's great that you've offered your life to the Lord, but He doesn't want that. He, he, he wants your all, but He's not calling you to the priesthood or to the, to the religious life. You, you always meet people like that. Or some people who are very intelligent have the means to make great wealth, think, okay, I give up being rich, you know, to the Lord, I surrender to the Lord. Well, the Lord might want you to be a very successful and wealthy business person because He has a plan for you. But you need to begin by surrendering everything uh, to the Lord. I remember an experience in my own life when I was first ordained I went through this period, I call it a time of oppression. You see, when I chose to follow the Lord, my decision was, God, if I'm going to follow you, it's 100%. I'm going to give you all I have. I'm going to live the gospel as radically as I can. 
and I joined the Companions of the Cross. I was ordained a priest. In my early years of priesthood, I was very uncomfortable or even ashamed of the fact that I wasn't living radical poverty because I belong to a community where the priests, each one of us, are in charge of our own finances, and we have to own a car and computer and all that kind of stuff, you know? It was, it was a time of kind of oppression. And also, you know, there was a part of me, too, I guess I was scared about being judged by people. And it's like, oh, look at Father Mark. He's got nice 31-inch wheels on his truck, you know? It's like, I never knew, you know? And, you know, it's kind of like I remember when I was at the York University chaplaincy, uh, when the iPhones started coming out, I got myself an iPhone. I was traveling a lot, and it was just the handiest thing. So I remember the first time at the chaplaincy, all the students were around, I happened to get a text message, so I pull out my iPhone. And the students are like, oh. And one student says, is that an iPhone? I say, yeah, it's an iPhone. He says, well, I didn't know priests were allowed to have iPhones. <laughs> I said, dude, it's a phone, it's not a wife, Okay. <laughs> but anyways, as it was a time of oppression, I felt like I, I, felt like I wasn't giving God enough. And I, I prayed for this for a long, long time. And then there was one day, it was just bothering me. And I went to the chapel and I just begged God, God, you need to give me clarity. And then I went back into my bedroom and I was folding my laundry. And I was continuing to pray. And as I was folding my laundry, and this, this happened to, this, this kind of experience has happened to me maybe like, I get not more than five times my whole life. But as I was folding the laundry, it's like God's presence came to me in such a real, tangible way. So much so that my face, I dropped my laundry and my face was on the carpet just with God's magnificent presence. And I felt the Lord so clearly, not in human words, but communicate to me that, Mark, I am more pleased with obedience than I am to sacrifice. I called you to the companions of the cross to live this life, to preach the gospel in this way. I'm doing a unique work in your life and I, I don't want anything except for what I've asked you for. So again, a lot of us think, oh, if I sacrifice everything to the Lord, He will take everything. That's not true. If you sacrifice everything to the Lord, He will take a little bit and He will give you much more. The Lord always gives more than He takes. But you know, the, the beautiful thing is, is that oftentimes what we give isn't that impressive. It doesn't look that impressive. Only God knows the heart. And in in the beautiful scripture, 1 Samuel, the Lord says, not as man sees does God see, because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. And sometimes what we're giving to the Lord might not seem impressive. There might be a school teacher who suffers from insomnia, depression, has health problems, and she goes in and she teaches as best she can. But on the outside, people are saying she's a lousy teacher, she's lazy, she's cranky, she's disorganized, but she might be making a much pure and holy offering to the Lord than the teacher who's, you know, got it all together and is really impressive, but really isn't being wholehearted. And so even sometimes when we're trying to serve the Lord and it seems like we're doing it in a not that great a way, we might be surprised. Perhaps our offering is, is, is much greater than we, we could imagine. <clears throat> so again, in summary, the Lord wants us to not be afraid. He wants to assure us the oil will not run out, the flour will rot, not run out. He wants us to believe and stand on His Word, and He wants us to hold nothing back. For an audio CD or video DVD of the teaching by Father Mark Goring on Hold Nothing Back, we invite you to write to us. Our address is Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y2T8. When you write, ask for an audio CD or video DVD of the teaching by Father Mark going on, Hold Nothing Back. 
On the next edition of Food for Life, Father Mark Goring looks at the Lamb of God. This isn't a lamb from among your sheep. This isn't a lamb who's just going to take away the sins of a few days or last year or of a certain people. This is God's lamb, and he will take away the sins of the whole world. If your life is anything like mine, you're a lot busier than you really want to be. And I find there's lots of things that fall through the cracks, things that don't get done. And one of those things that used to bother me was my plan giving. I'd want to financially support various ministries, but often, you know, I would forget to do it. Well, with Food for Life, there are many, uh, if you feel that, you know, the program has touched you and um, you're in a position to support us, um, it would be really helpful uh, if you could, uh, if you would consider supporting us in some way financially. And there's a, a number of ways that are that are quite convenient now. So, uh, if you go to our site uh, online, you can you can use PayPal to uh, to donate, uh, or you can write to us. And uh, one of the ways that you may find convenient um, is through uh, monthly giving, either through uh, credit or debit or check. And uh, you may find that as a convenient way. If, if you feel that, you know, Food for Life has really touched you and encourages you, uh, that would be super helpful uh, for the Food for Life ministry. God, God bless you and, and your generosity. We would like to thank you for your financial support of the Food for Life television ministry. Food for Life is funded only by viewers like yourself. We have no commercial sponsors. Your tax-deductible donations help pay for production of the program, pay the television station for the time that the program is on the air, and pay for the mailing of our monthly newsletter. Thank you again for your support of this Catholic television ministry. For an audio CD or video DVD of today's ministry, we invite you to write to us. When you write, mention the program number 1596 and today's topic, Father Mark Goring on Hold Nothing Back. Food for Life is a nonprofit Catholic charity funded only by donations from viewers. To help us continue this Catholic television ministry, please send your tax deductible donation to Food for Life. Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y2T8. To save postage, you may now make your donation online. Just go to our website and follow the link. If every viewer gave a loony or a toony each week, all expenses would be met. If you have never donated before, we ask that you make your check payable to Food for Life, and our address is Food for Life. Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y2T8. Thanks to your faithful prayers and tax-deductible financial support, Food for Life is the longest-running Catholic television program in Canada. On the next edition of Food for Life, Father Mark Goring looks at the Lamb of God. This isn't a lamb from among your sheep. This isn't a lamb who's just going to take away the sins of a few days or last year or of a certain people. This is God's lamb, and he will take away the sins of the whole world. For an audio CD or video DVD of the teaching by Father Mark Goring on Hold Nothing Back, we invite you to write to us. Our address is Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y2T8. When you write, ask for an audio CD or video DVD of the teaching by Father Mark Goring on Hold Nothing Back.